G'day, I'm James and welcome to this bonus video on the beauty and the thinking behind quadratics. In this video I want to talk about a particular word, the word parabola. Now as you read books on quadratics and look at exam questions and textbook questions you'll find people often use the word parabola and I've not yet mentioned the word at all in this entire series. Because the story of parabolas is a very different one from the story of quadratics. I stuck with the story of quadratics. So let me now give you the story of parabolas very briefly. In fact, we can start in a very fun, exciting place. A great Greek scholar by the name of Archimedes, who lived around 250 BC, about sort of 2,250 years ago, is said to have invented the following thing. The king of Syracuse at the time said, we are living on an island, so here's the island, here's the ocean that approaches the island, that's often under attack. Enemy ships would come in and come up to the shores of the island and then attack all the people on the island of Syracuse. And then Archimedes said, okay, I can th figure out a way to actually thwart these incoming ships. He said he was going to build great big mirrors and put them at the edges of the cliffs so that the sun's rays, what would happen? The sun rays would come into the mirror, they'd all be reflected, this, this mirror's going to be curved in exactly the right way so that all the rays then focus on a particular point on an incoming wooden ship. So all the hot sun rays come and get focused at a concentrated point on this ship that's approaching the island and they're going to set it afire before it even gets to the shore. So Archimedes, this is how you spell his name, was going to build these huge, huge curved mirrors that would focus parallel rays of light from the sun and, and bring that focus point onto the hulls of those wooden ships and burn them. All right, now there's no, no clear uh, uh, records that he actually did this. He talked about doing it. No one knows if he actually did it or not. But here's the question. Those Greek scholars some 2,200 years ago knew about what special shape curve has that property. In fact, they called that curve a, believe it or not, parabola. In fact, let me describe how they described the curve. So let me quickly clean the board. They realized that they could create the curve as follows. Now, here we are 2,200 years ago and algebra is not invented. They did it purely in terms of geometry. They said, imagine you have a line, imagine you have a point. But they gave these things different names. They call that point the focus. They call this line the directrix. And they said, construct a curve of all the points with this property. Choose a point like that one. So it's distance from the focus. That distance there matches the distance to the line. So there's one point there. There's another one about here. Uh, it's about there, I guess. That, that distance matches that distance at 90 degrees. Choose another point over here with that distance matches that distance. Another one with that distance matches that distance and so on. Get, and trace out all those points such that those distances match that way. That's the curve they called a parabola. So no algebra, algebra was not invented for another you know, thousand years after this. So they described it purely in terms of the geometry. And then they could prove using geometry that when you have parallel rays of light coming down on this particular curve, these rays will actually focus onto a particular point somewhere along, uh, away from the mirror. And hence would work for burning those enemy ships. All right, so that is a parabola. That's the curve of the parabola. There's no reason to believe that this U-shaped curve matches the U-shaped curves we've been studying. Though, 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 it turns out if you were to draw a coordinate system here of X and Y axes and set things up right, you could actually write a formula for that curve and it would be of the form Y equals some number times X squared. So it'd be basically, or maybe some, some number BX plus a C, a full quadratic. So it turns out this curve does follow a quadratic formula and that's why people call these quadratic graphs parabolas. But it's not obvious that that curve shape that came from the Greek history has anything to do with those formulas. That was really early on, this was later, and they happened to be the same. Pure, fabulous, wonderful coincidence. And the reason I point that out is because you might say, oh, whenever I see a U-shaped curve, it's going to have to be quadratic. Well, good question, good, uh, good belief, because in school, the only quadratic curves you see are, the only U-shaped curves you see are these quadratic ones. So if I take my necklace, which I took off, Here's another U-shaped curve, so imagine I hung it right there. That looks like that's probably a quadratic as well, because this looks like just the sort of things we've been graphing. Is that a parabola? Is that a quadratic equation, graphic quadratic equation? Mankind, scholars were wondering about this for many, many, many years. And it wasn't until very late in the history of mankind that people realized this curve here I'm hanging on the board right now 
is not following a quadratic equation. It's not the same U-shaped curve that we've been plotting all along throughout this course. It's a different U-shaped curve. It's called a catenary from the Latin word for chain, because actually it's literally hanging chains, the curve from a hanging chain, but it does not follow AX squared plus BX plus C. It follows actually a much more complicated form. It's very hard for scholars to figure out the formula of a hanging chain. All right, so my point is when books and so forth just flippantly call these quadratic graphs parabolas, I get worried because I know the story of parabolas is a very different story. It's the story of geometry, Greek geometry, than the story of quadratics, which is the story of algebra, that just happen to be the same. And it gives the impression just because two things look the same, they must be the same, which is not true. Because that looks like a, whoops, well, what's going on? That looks like a quadratic curve, but turns out it isn't. All right, so be warned, be warned. Yes, it is right to call them parabolas, but be warned it comes from a different place.